of chat GPT in the tendering process. Yeah. Yes, so very why, much. Why, so. not, why not talk a little bit about that? And, and just for those who who don't know, maybe just uh, kick off with a, a bit of a description on what is Chat GPT. Um, um, so let me. Uh, I, I, I won't go into the technology of it, but, sure, but um, sure. the, the effectively these are Chat GPT is just the latest iteration in what are known as large language models or LLMs, and effectively what. What happens is that you develop an algorithm that visits all of Wikipedia, all of Stack Overflow, all the government websites, and you come up with a um, tool that, under, that truly understands language or appears to understand language, and then pre accurately predicts the next word in a sentence. So you can say to ChatGTP, I would like you to write a poem for, um, uh, I, I don't know, um, my 12 year old son's homework and it will write a perfect poem. And then you can say, well, like, I'd like you to write it in the style of Donald Trump and it will write exactly the same poem, but change it as if it was Donald Trump speaking. So there, there are some, it's a, it's a really interesting and impressive piece of technology. But I think the most important part is that it allows you to do two things, any user can generate quite complicated and sophisticated texts for very little effort. And equally, you can assess and evaluate text for very little effort. Um, now, the, the implications for procurement, I think, I believe are profound. Um, and uh, the, the in the first instance, we are going to see a lot more, but we can see many, many more bids because what, what's going to happen is, you know, what puts people off bidding is this idea that you would sit there and go, oh, uh, I need to, I've got to write a 500 word response to, there are 15 questions, each are 500 or 1,000 words. 15,000 words, good bid response capable of, including references to my own firm's abilities and to all of those sort of um, things, that's five days work. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, you know, three days yeah. to draft, edit, review, change from five, six days work. And if you've got two other bids on, you might just say, I'm not going to bid. But with chat GPT, you can sit there and go, fine, here are the questions. This is a bit about my company. I want answers to all the questions. And it's the work of a less than a day. Yeah. Um, and if so that's the, the case. One of, yeah, one of the I common mean, the, questions we have in our specifications is give us the methodology that you will use to achieve this project outcome. Hmm. That's something that ChatGPT could do. Yes. So what you could do is you could say, um, we previously used a, pro a, a methodology a bit like this. Could you write an answer describing the methodology we would use for this project? It requires us to have these things. And it would take the original text and rewrite it. Um, you could even ask it to just go, I'm bidding on a government tender for the South African um, uh, 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 South African government and I need it to have I need to make a reference to methodology it has to include these six things and it will write it up and, and because it's effectively um, credible text that is costless you know there's no there's no cost to producing this text in, in, in its marginal cost um, I, I can only see that that will increase the number of bids so, you know, if you give me 15,000 um, uh, 15, word questions, I, I, I'm going to be responding in day, day and a half, rather than oh. five or six days. And um, so that means that more people can bid because the, you don't have to have the expert bid writers. 
and um, you're going to get more bids. So uh, it's, you, I can see that happening now. Are you seeing anything like that starting to happen? That's coming um, in with... We're working with the Scottish government. We're trying to understand if it's actually happening. Um, I think it's a bit early to tell yet, but um, I won't lie, I've already used it on a World Bank bid um, mm -hmm. because they said we need a 5,000 word essay and your deadline's this afternoon. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. Um, yes. I'm going to get chat GPT to, to write it. Now, it wasn't a particularly good bid and I don't expect we'll do very well with it, but I thought it's better to put these two things together and get a bid in than not bid. Yeah. Well, there you are. There's, so, uh, so, so um, it's happening. Yeah, it's, it, 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 I mean, it's, it's happening. It, it, and, and it's not, <laughs> don't, don't be saying, oh, I've got a year to sort this out. It's happening now. Mm -hmm. On the other side, though, there is some really interesting evaluations that can be done. So the um, you can use ChatGPT to evaluate patterns and make predictions, and you can use these large language models to effectively um, the the kind of decision tree. So if you give it enough training data, you can quite accurately predict who might win a win a bid. Um, now that sounds like. Uh, something that suppliers would want to know and you wouldn't want suppliers to know but equally for, for from the buyer's perspective is your bid going to be competitive can i predict how many bids i'm going to get you know actually i don't want 200 bids that's a real problem for me because i'm never going to be able to i've got to go through and evaluate every bid so i want to reduce the bids between 6 and 15 nominally so yeah. you might you might be able to sort of look at this and go, well, okay, if I'm getting gonna get 200 bids, I clearly haven't specified closely enough because I know that there aren't 200 companies who can do this work, or there aren't 200 companies that I would want to do this work. So I'm gonna tighten up the spec. Or if it's, okay, well, I'm only gonna get two bids because it's too big, I might split this up and go, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get, a, try and attract more people that way so we can make our bids more competitive it's very good for anti-corruption work we're already using um that around trying to spot cartels and trying to see where deviations appear in 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 um submitted bids there's lots of stuff going on that i think it, it makes it particularly interesting but because of our reliance on text i, I believe that wow. the what this this sort of product is going to have a profound effect yes Ian, are you aware of any tools that might exist or any work that might be done to help the supply chain professional understand whether what they're looking at is a chat gpt generated piece of text or something so else? Uh, there are um um uh uh, um, so, yes, there are certain um, algorithms and different ways that you can feed ChatGPT its own data and say, did you did you um, um, did you generate this? You know, was this generated by an algorithm? Uh, and they're in, they're increasingly sophisticated, but that's an arms race. So you can mm -hmm. only you know every time someone bills and and what happens i don't know about your legislation but there's nothing in the uk legislation that says you can't submit a bid using chat gpt mm -hmm. so i mean you know even if you do find it what, what are you going to do i think mm -hmm. what i the way i see it i think is the that um uh, often smaller questions so 100 word questions because then it doesn't matter, you know, writing it out yourself or getting ChatGPT to write it is nominal. It's 100 words. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. Yeah. you know, getting tighter questions and then a, a second round of questions that perhaps the supplier wasn't expecting. So you might say, right, we require, we're, we're going to, uh, you can plan it ahead. You can say, we're going to go out to tender here. 
get in your questions. We're going to take your questions, then we're going to ask you to expand on a certain area. Now, actually, if they had just been using something and they don't understand the 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 you know that methodology question, if you don't understand really how you're going to do it, that will expose people and put mm -hmm. them at the bottom of the pile. So there are different things you can do. And Cyril, I see your point uh, about Italy banning chat GPT um, around data privacy. Um, I think at a wider societal level, yes, there were very strong concerns. I mean, there was one uh, case where a someone put into chat GPT, um, tell me about this professor, and it made up a story that the professor had been um, uh, denied tenure at one um, uh, university in the US because he'd been involved in um, uh, a sexual assault claim. And that was never the case. And, yeah. and so he's um, suing OpenAI for this claim. I, I, I think um, it is a very real problem, but I don't think it... Um, tells us that we are um i don't think it changes what happens here because i can build a large language model on the top of my data and offer up a procurement gpt or a chat procurement and mm. i won't i won't have a data breach inf issue so because i just trained it on procurement data mm. so it, it, this stuff isn't going away um, and Cyril, your your question, do we have enough uh, regulation around what AI can and cannot do? I think you, you've got to imagine here, this is just text. You can't, you know, what we're, what we're asking it to do is generate text. Um, and um, the, the, and the problem kind of lies with us because we're using text as a proxy for effort. We've relied for hundreds of years on the idea that just because you've written a thousand words, <laughs> it makes you a reasonable person, a reasonable bidder, and that's gone. Mm. It's, just, it's just gone. And, and you can pass a law saying, I don't allow chat GP, you know, we're not gonna allow any bids from this, this mechanism. But then you've got, if someone goes, well, you bumped me from a tender because I, I produced this text that you said was from chat GPT, but actually it wasn't. I've got evidence. Here's all the drafts. What are you going to do? You're going to end up in court. It doesn't it just doesn't stand up. So, mm -hmm. so I think this isn't a situation where we can ban it. We just, we can't go back to the past. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. We have to just look at adapting our techniques, shorter text responses, multiple stage procurements and maybe encouraging you know in some ways this might be good you know mm -hmm. we talk about the getting black businesses involved and 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 some of the sometimes linguistically they may have a challenge mm -hmm. so actually can they use this technology to produce good bids if they can do the work and you know how many mm -hmm. times have we complained that we we've, we've seen a contract go to someone who put in the best bid but couldn't deliver the service you know well maybe there's some egalitarian benefit that we can see out of this where where good businesses who aren't very good at bidding become a lot better at bidding mm -hmm. so i don't i I, th I don't think we can put the genie back in the bottle um mm -hmm. brian the greater concern is the myriad of method statement databases which can now be accessed hence the evaluation of such output now becomes critical to determine supply selection Training of evaluators becomes critical. I, I think, you know, Brian, actually it is about training of evaluators, but training of specifications and, and people who write specifications as well as evaluators. The other thing I would say is, you know, if you can use ChatGPT to create responses, use it to create the best specifications as well. You know, understand, you know, get, get the control of this stuff and go, well, am I going to get a really competitive response if I put this out? And opening up and dicting responses, I think, is is where we need to head to. It's going to take a bit of work, but I think that's what we should be doing. I was at a... Uh, I love the... Go ahead, Ian. Yeah. You love it. 
I just say I love that this this is causing you know that this is firing people's interest. It's a really big issue, and it's, you know, it's massive. And I, well, exactly, and you know, we think it's just, you might. We're just talking about procurement. You know, the possibility if you're a politician, you'd say goodbye to your inbox because mm. you have lost the ability to say um, uh, to to um, to determine whether a bot has written um an email or whether a human has written an email mm -hmm. we've lost that ability now mm -hmm. i mean I, I you can go to chat gpt and ask it to and you say i want to um i got a parking ticket from westminster council for parking at buckingham palace uh, uh last wednesday can you write a letter explaining why they they should rescind the ticket <laughs> 30 seconds mm -hmm. <laughs> And so, so the, our, our bureaucracies face a, a kind of tsunami of text that mm. we have that I don't think we're ready for. Mm. I was at a, a training session at a client and uh, Ron, Ron Grace, who is online this morning, uh, suggested that I, I ask ChatGPT to write the specification and the evaluation criteria for a particular requirement that uh, he had, and it, it did a pretty good specification. Um, yep. Now, I see that there's more um, functionality that's coming up that will actually allow us to possibly put templates together and, and ask ChatGPT to go out and fill these certain sections in. Um, so they, it, it, could, it could make us develop better specifications and easier i think yeah I, look i think you're going to have to the the, the bits that are going look what, what chat gpt will do will create a text and i can tell it to create a text with a reference to a previous contract that i've worked on now that contract may or may not exist and it's up to us to validate whether the, the people are good enough so i think we have to think about rethink yeah. the way that we use text as a mechanism for determining um activity mm -hmm. rather than saying actually i want to see a reference i want to see your blog posts i want to see you know i want to see your history of having done this kind of work that might be a credible way of looking at it um but also or presentation mm -hmm. Exactly. Or I was just about to say oral presentations, you know, those are the sort of things that are, are, are distinguishing features. So, so I just think we're going to have to adapt. I don't think the world is coming to an end. We're not going to stop competing for the tenders. I just think you can't go back to the way it was before. It, we, if we, if we keep asking for 15,000 word answers, well, 15 questions with a thousand words each, we're in trouble yeah. because there's just going to be too many bids. Thanks, Ian. Uh, just uh, for those who are online, um, saw Ratogua who asked some of the questions around Italy and uh, regulation. He's uh, offered to come in and uh, Cyril has a, a really, really uh, good background in the technology space and we'll be having a uh, more discussion on on AI and ChatGPT at a later session. 